Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me Mr. P and this is another episode in a Proxmox home server series. In this video we'll show you how to how you can set up GoToFi Docker container to send and receive messages. GoToFi in a nutshell is a service that will send you a notification to your phone uh, depending on the trigger that you can set up. At the time of recording GoToFi only available for Android devices. You can download GoToFi app on from Google Play Store, F-Droid, or download APK file and sideload it. In upcoming videos, I'll show you the alternative to GoToFi that will work with iOS devices as well. So GoToFi is quite simple to set up. And the way I'm gonna demonstrate the GoToFi functionality is I will set up the ZFS scrub for my, for my Proxmox instant, which will run once a week on Sundays at midnight, and it will run a scrub on ZFS pool. Scrub in a nutshell is the like a maintenance command that you can initiate, initiate manually by writing the inside the Proxmox node in the shell. If you put Z pool scrub and the name of your ZFS pool, in my case is tank. So I'm going to press enter. It gives me no errors and it looks like nothing happened. But behind the scenes, if I, if I put ZFS Z pool status, behind the scenes scrub started and is finished in three seconds because this is ZFS mirrored pool. That pretty much almost no data in there. So scrub run and it's repaired zero bytes. That means the both drives are healthy and no errors. And as you can see, it's, it's run three minutes to 10 p.m. at the time of recording this video. So we're gonna create the, the that is very small sh shell command or shell script that will be triggered automatically on cron task every midnight on Sundays. And once the scrub is finished, it will send the curl command <coughs> The curl command, if I'm going to go to do documents, push notifications, is going to run a curl command with the URL to our GoToFi instant, followed by token, which we will create. And it will say, for example, title, my title. You can put whatever you want to hear. We're going to say ZFS scrub. Message it might be scrub completed or something like that. So that's what we're going to do. So first thing, we need to set up ourselves a GoToFi Docker container. This is a Portainer Web GUI, which is, uh, by the way, running inside 102 docker yt VM. How to set up Portainer, I've already done a video about it. I'll leave a link in the description below. And if I'll remember, I'll make sure the card will show up at the top right hand corner. So inside of Portainer, I'm going to click on Stacks. If you can see that, it probably has a collapsed message here. Sorry, collapsed menu here. So I'm going to click on the Stacks and I'll click here, Add a New Stack. Give it a name. GoToFi-YT. By the way, you can put any capital letters here or special characters. So GoToFi-YT. And if you follow the link in the description, it will take you to my paste bin. And this is the what we're going to use. We're going to use all that to basically get this running. So I'm going to select all that and copy. Go back to a portainer and paste in here. So we're going to use version free and we're going to create a service where it says server, we can call it GoToFi. Then image is going to be a GitHub repo for GoToFi server. Unless stopped, I'm going to change that to say always. Because um, always, that means that once this container is run, or sort of once the VM is restarted, or if something happened to the container, it will automatically start. By the time of you watching this video, I will make sure that this one is changed to always just to is, is to set up a bit like to make your setup process a bit easier. Container name is going to be GoToFi port on the host. You need to enter the port number that is not been used. So I'm going to go and double check what I have. I used 8080, 4433 and 9000. On the left hand side needs to be unique ports. On the right hand side, you can use million containers and they all can be port 80 on the right hand side. But left side, a port number needs to be unique and not been used before. So I can see 8080 is used. So in my case, I'm going to just delete all that. And I will say 8081. <clears throat> Excuse me. Volume. We need to create a persistent volume for this container. The reason is quite simple. If you restart this container and you don't have a persistent volume, that means that you're going to have to set up the container and a username and all the connections from scratch every time the container is stopped. So let's go inside the SSH client, which is already logged into my docker-yt VM. And my current location is home Mr. P. I'm gonna navigate inside the Docker. And there is a folder already created called GoToFi. If I'm gonna navigate in that, as you can see, folder is empty. So I'll type PWD enter. That means print working directory. 
and I will select all this and copy go back inside uh, into Portina setup <clears throat> select all that and paste that all in and right now I map the on the host side this is where Gotify will store its data and on a container side this is where Gotify con system or server or, or service will think the data lives but it's going to be mapped to my local uh, to my host and it's going to be persistent that means that if i restart this container or full we'll delete the container and we'll create again as as long as this map is the same stays the same uh, the go to file will use the previously set up uh, set up information or set up files so go to file i'm going to scroll down i'm going to say deploy the stack and stack is deployed so if i'm going to click on the go to file dash yt stack i can see it started if i click on this icon which gives me logs I can see that start is listening on port 80, which technically is a, should be port 881. This is what is mapped on a host side. So I'm going to click on that. And it takes me to a login screen of the GoToFi. By default, username and password is admin admin. Press enter. And it straight away tells me that the client Chrome 116.0.0 is created. If I click on the clients at the top, I, I can see the clients created here. In, an, in a couple of minutes, when we're going to start setting everything up, the new client will show up here, which will represent my phone. As I will show you how everything works on the Android phone too, and when you get the message and what actually happens. At the top, there's a couple of more options, as you can see, under users, you can, you can create a new user. Apps. Apps is more like a services list. This list will show all the services that has access to Gotify or list of tokens linked to the services that has access to Gotify. So we need to create one. I'm going to create application. I will name this ZFS Scrub. ZFS Scrub Cron Task. Uh, default priority, I can leave whatever I want. Like you can change one, two, three, four, five, etc. Zero is fine by default. Create. And it's created the new application, which is called ZFS Scrub. And this is the token that we're going to use to send the message that is shown here, as you can see under curl at the end of this, as you can see, there is a token that we're going to enter. Go back to the go to find clients is like I said about the clients. There's options to add more plugins to the go to find that increases its functionality. Under admin, you can change the password. Logout is obviously will log out of the go to find web GUI and then light and dark mode switch. So I have my token here ready. Let's go back inside the Proxmox and let's start setting up my, my script. Currently, I am inside the root home directory. So I'll create a folder called scrub.sh. And <clears throat> just to practice, start every sh, uh, sh file with this line. That means that if I will create, I will convert this file to be executable the system will know that it needs to use bin bash and um, bin slash bash um, to initiate the script. This is just uh, becomes more like my habit to add. Even if I'm not going to create this as executable, I just like to start always file like this. So what we're going to do? Well, first, we need to run the scrub command. As I showed you before, it's going to be zpool scrub and the name of the ZFS pool. If you have more than one, you can start daisy chaining the command like for example this <clears throat> and if you have third one like this I'm just gonna comment those out for a minute so that's it it's gonna run a zpool scrub tank and then double one percent means that next command that is not commented out needs to or allowed to run or will run only if this command successfully finished so let's go back to my go to fi um, go to fi demo help page I'm going to go and copy all that, go back into my Proxmox and paste it in. Let's delete the dollar sign. And right now we need to start setting this up. First thing, what is my URL? So my URL is this. So 157 semicolon 8081 is my, um, the address of my web GUI for GoToFi. So HTTP, I don't need HTTPS followed by this 8081 and delete all this and leave slash messages message question mark token go back to go to find this scrub if i press copy is just sometimes fails to copy to clipboard actually fails more often than successfully copies 
So if you click on the eye icon, reveal the token and just copy the old fashioned way. And now if I'm going to go and right click and do paste and delete all that, the title. So let's create the title, which is going to be a ZFS scrub and a message. I'm going to say scrub done. That's fine. And the priority is set to five. You can set to one, two, whatever you want. I'm just going to leave us five by default. So if right now we're going to, we'll press Ctrl O to save, enter to confirm, Ctrl F to close, and the file is ready. So I'm going to press cat space scrub, which is going to cat out the file, as you can see here. So right now I can initiate this file and check what happens. If I open the Gotify, as you can see, there's option right now on the left hand side which says ZFS scrub. This is where all your application names will show up. At the moment, I have only one. If I add more, all of them are going to show up here. Or if you click on messages, they all from all the applications will show up in one location. So as you can see right now, there is no messages. And inside the Proxmox shell, if I write bash scrub.sh, and that's it. It says, okay, scrub finished. And straight away, it outputs my curl, curl command. And here we go. Scrub done, nine seconds, 10 seconds ago. And I can dismiss that. If I click recycle bin, message will be dismissed with no way to come with like returning or no way to retrieve it. So you delete that, delete the message only if you're, you're like 100% sure that you wanna remove it. When I'm using this on my main Proxmox uh, instant, I like to keep the messages here for about a week or so. And then when I'm 100% sure that they dealt with, I'm just gonna click recycle bin. So that's running. That's this uh, Gotify Docker container is working. How are we going to automate this now? So first of all, what's my location is root and the file name is scrub. <clears throat> okay. So now another query command that I want to show you before we go is like say, for example, I change the, um, I, let's say location. So right now this is my location. If I press enter PWD print work directory, I'm in Etsy. And it's Chironi, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. If you put CD space tilde, you'll be automatically taken back to your whatever user you logged in home directory. So CD space tilde is more like a, it's, it's, it's exactly like a home button on the smartphone devices. You press the button on, the, on your phone, it takes you to home page or your home screen. This is what it does on the Linux CD space tilde. So right now we are, we are okay to start setting up the cron task. To amend or add the cron task to already existing cron tasks, you need to type nano space slash etc slash cron, not cron, cron tab. Press enter. And this already has a couple of lines. As you can see, you already have a couple of lines here. We're going to go all the way below the hashtag, make a bit more spaces. And I'm going to say Mr. P, uh, just to make sure that this is me who added them or me, it's just I know that below this line is all my edits. So how the cron task runs? Cron task initiates the, the commands depending on the setup of when you want to run it. So it starts with minutes, hours, day of the month. So it can be like first month, uh, first or 31st month. So it's January, February, March and etc. And it's Monday, Tuesday, as you can see here as an example. So <clears throat> I want to run at zero minutes zero hours i don't care about what day of the month is or what month is as long as sunday so that means that on sundays regardless if it's uh, january february or is it first or 15th of the month as long as it's sunday and it's midnight run the command so right now you need to run the command as root first you need to cd tilde and that's why I gave you a demo. CD tilde will take the user root back to his home directory. Just make sure that it's exactly the location. And then double ampersand dash scrub dos sh. So on Sunday in, at midnight, root will navigate to home directory. And once it's at the home directory, run this command, which is bash scrub dos sh. Control O to save, enter to confirm, Control X to close. So right now, cron on Sundays at midnight will initiate the command and I will get the message on my phone. Speaking about the phone, this is the Gotify app running on my phone free. And first thing, I need to enter Gotify URL. 
So let's open, let's enter my URL for the Docker container. 157 semicolon 881. I need to tap check URL. Understand that this is not HTTPS or but HTTP. And it's asking me to enter username, which is admin and a password. Like I said, this admin again, log in. And now it says, okay, choose a name for your new session. I will delete that, enter Mr. P, and then fold. And before I click create, please note that under clients, as you can see, there's no new clients here. If I press create, the new client created. If I refresh this page, let's refresh, click on the clients. As you can see, Mr. P fold showed up. So if you use another Android phone or you log into this using another browser, it's just going to start creating these things down here. So right now I have my phone running Gotify and I'm successfully logged in. If I go back to my Proxmox instant, let's cycle back to run commands. Here we go. If I press run uh, bash scrub, the message showed up on my phone straight away. So if I, I can swipe to the left or right to dismiss it. Like I said, if you, if you dismiss a message, you can obviously on the phone quickly undo it. But one, once undo message expires, there is no way to bring it back. So right now this will run and um, I will receive a notification on my phone every time this scrub command successfully finishes running on my Proxmox system. And this is how you set up Gotify inside your Docker container to notify you about the things that happens on your server. And Gotify is not only limited for this kind of thing. Gotify can notify you about anything as long as there is an option for you to HTTP post the message or curl the message. And I, like I said before, in the upcoming videos, I'll show you alternative to Gotify that will work with iOS devices. And I'll show the Gotify that I will use Gotify in the upcoming videos for quite a lot of Docker containers that Gotify works quite well with. And it's quite handy to have some sort of notification server already set up inside your home lab uh, while setting up other containers because obviously you want to get notified about things that happen with your home server and uh, obviously if something goes south you obviously get notification and you know that you need to go and act and then fix it fix something or restart the service or something anyway this was the video about gotify and how to automate zfs scrub inside your proxmox home server thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye